This is going to be a really quick video on uh, a little gadget I made up. Um, really didn't have to make anything other than a mounting bracket. Um, the new Raggle signal, signal generator up here uh, works great. I'm really happy with it. Uh, the only thing is for doing radio work, the output power is way, way, way too high. <laughs> you know, the lowest, the lowest, the camera straight here, the lowest level that thing will put out is just way ridiculously too high for working on radios. Um, now, it has a really high output level, which is great for, you know, good grief, dry, directly driving, you know, mixers or doing, doing audio work. But for doing receiver sensitivity checks, yeah, it's pretty much useless. <laughs> that thing will blow the doors off of a radio at its lowest lowest output level. So yeah, you need to use an attenuator. Now I've got got dozens of attenuators. I go up into the thousands of watts for attenuators. I've got a couple, you know, 500 and 300 watt ones under the bench when I'm testing radios. But uh, you know, for dropping signals down, you know, I can use little guys like this, you know, little small ones. This one's uh what is this? This is a 20 dB you know, big, bigger ones, you know, for higher wattage, which I wouldn't need for that, but, you know, like, here's a, uh, there's a 10 dB one, but, uh, now I have some of the, uh, bench-style <clears throat> attenuators, the HPs, nice, had a little rotary knob on the side, and they work great, but the problem is they take up bench space, um, so, you know, the, the two things that I have, it's either going to take up space on the bench, or in the case of those little inline ones, they're just inconvenient to use, because especially if I need to start stacking them. Um, and like I said, I just like the rotary attenuator, though, because it's selectable. And especially if you have two rotary attenuators, you can have one that goes in 10 dB steps and one that goes in 1 dB steps. So luckily, I have a uh, mountain of parts <laughs> from just mountains of stuff I've disassembled over the years. And I have lots of old rotary attenuators out of stuff. So I had these two sitting around. This is a 70 dB in 10 dB steps. And this is a 10 dB in 1 dB steps attenuator. If I remember correctly, I think these came out of a Boonton 102 AM FM signal generator. Um, may have been out of a sweep generator, but I think they came out of, the, out of that Boonton because I've got like... Two more, I had a couple. Because any time I get a piece of test equipment, if I like it and use it, I always end up getting extras. So I think I've got one, at least one, if not two more of those Boontons floating around here somewhere. But I dismantled one of them, whichever one was in the worst condition when I finally stopped using those things. Um, and that was one of the things I wanted to get out of it was the attenuators. Because I've got a lot of the other attenuators I have. I've got a couple that are uh, 100 dB attenuators and 10 dB steps. The problem is they have uh, TNC connectors on them instead of BNCs. Um, but, you know, I had kept these, and luckily I had kept the sheet metal, the aluminum structure, at least this back part of it, uh, out of it. So the holes were already in this rear piece of aluminum with the flange. My original idea was I was going to make a bench top style. Um, I'd actually even started reach down here and grab it because I had to dig the project box out. This is one of those projects I started. I'd cut down the side hoops. You know, I needed, I'd cut these little brackets out. I was going to have to re-TIG weld these back in. Um, I guess I could have MIG welded them, but TIG welding just looks so much better. But I was going to weld this all back together, you know, have this little side panels and, you know, would have been a nice, nice fancy little box with the, you know, anti- hit handle, you know, handle sticking out around the controls, because it basically would have looked something like that. would have been a little bit wider, but, uh, yeah, like I said, I got got to here, and I was like, that's, yeah, again, bench space. You know, if I need a rotary and a bench style, I've got the HPs. So I wanted something that I could mount to that shelf right there. So luckily, like I say, I, when I cut this out originally to make that project, and it was just one of those projects kind of pushed off to the side and then ended up collecting dust. I luckily had left these flanges on there, and there was enough there that I just took this back out to the shop, um, you know, ran it through the bandsaw, shrank it down a little bit more, so, you know, shrunk the width down some, notched, notched out the corners, and then I think these might have been off of that for the t Well, no, actually, I think that sheet metal might have been off something else. When I think about it, I'm not sure. <laughs> It might have been off of that, but these kind of like fake leather, plastic-covered uh, aluminum. But uh, 
So there's actually two pieces of metal here. This one's more just for show because this aluminum here has just got that, you know, sanded down look. Doesn't look very nice. And it had an extra, some extra holes in it, you know, there and whatnot. So this was just put on for a trim. But the whole idea here is, that's why there's a drill and three screws sitting there. You can see I actually already had it mounted. <laughs> and I figure that's why I actually had it mounted and I took it back out of the top. I'll quick show what the what this is before somebody sees this hanging off of that shelf and goes, what the hell is that? So that's what it is. Two, two attenuators for a total of 80 dB of attenuation. So there's 70 and a 10. And it's just going to mount. Actually, I can go ahead and remount it. I get to work around the camera here. And you can see exactly what it looks like. Like everything here, Everything's always a tight squeeze in the shop. I'm going to build projects so they just shoehorn in there. And when I say shoehorn, you cannot slide a piece of paper in there now. It's that tight between that coax and the meter. But, uh... And there we go. So... Now, I can just, I'll probably leave channel 1 hooked up permanently to this. I'll just leave this coax cable hooked up there. And then whenever I need to use it, um, I can, nice thing is this has zero, has a zero position. So I can leave it hooked up full time. And then whenever I need to use it, I just hook up my other BNC cable. And I can add, if I want to, I can add up to 80 dB of attenuation in 1 dB steps. Because, you know. One, two, three. So if I need, you know, 43 dB worth of attenuation added, I've got that on three, four, 43 dB added just that fast. So, like I said, that just come in really handy. Um, now, not that I need it with this, but it's kind of, I guess with other signal generators, this would be nice. Um, it has a an open position. So... Now, this signal generator has an output control, so you can enable the output. You can turn it on and off. But if you were using this with, let's say, an old generator, that when you turn the unit on, it's actually outputting a signal. The nice thing about this one is it has a position in between 0 and 10 that's off. So if you run a signal into this attenuator right here now, nothing comes out. It's completely disconnected. So, you know, that's, that's great, you know, for if you use something like that. So, you know, dig through your junk box, man. Might have an old, and that's another reason why I always like having old test equipment around. Uh, it's a great part source um, for really high quality parts. I mean, I checked these things, and they're both within, I think it was like 0 0.05 dB. Um, so, you know, for what I'm going to be using them for, that's that's perfectly fine. I can... I can definitely live with a 0 0.05 dB uh, accuracy. I mean, that's that's really, really low. So, especially at the signal levels I'm going to be dealing with, down in the minus 130 dB range, um, you know, because I want to be able to get down to, because a minus 133 dBm is 0 0.05 microvolts. So, you know, like I said, that's, that'll just come in really handy. I just thought I'd show a quick video of that. So, like I say, in case anybody would happen to see, hey, what the hell is them two big knobs floating out in the middle of nowhere up there? Where, you know, where did they come from and what are they? That's what it is. So, if you ever see me with a cable coming down here to a radio under test, that's all that is. It's just uh, two attenuators in series with the signal generator there, so I can knock the signal level down to a, a usable level for doing very, very uh, low signal strength uh, sensitivity adjustments on radios. So, there you go. More I thought about it. Nope, it wasn't the Boonton 102 <laughs> what those attenuators came out of. I can't remember. <laughs> the more I thought about it, I was like, man, did that really come out of that? So I dug out one of the manuals for that because I couldn't even remember what the hell. I didn't feel like going out and digging out one of the things to see what they looked like. So yeah, that was that has an attenuator in it, but that was a thing. I think that's where some of those uh, 100 dB attenuators that I got came from. So. I can't even remember what the hell those things came out of. Uh, that might have been... Because uh, I had some old sweep generators I had at one time I used to use years ago. They may have come out of one of those sweep generators. So, yeah. 
<laughs> your guess is probably as good as mine. I've dismantled so much stuff over the years. Um, I just have cabinets and shelves overflowing with stuff like that. Uh, sometimes it's yeah, it's, it's hard to remember what the heck something came out of. I know I got it. I just <laughs> for, for what it came out of, yeah, <laughs> that went in one brain cell and out a long time ago. So, yeah, just wanted to make sure I corrected uh, myself. Did not come out of one of those. So, there you go.